Trace Blaine. Trace Blaine. Trace Blaine. Hey. Okay, I figured out my key to success. Now I'm locked in. Yeah. I learned how to open doors like a locksmith. I'm up. Finally. Finally. How long have we been talking about doing this? Uh, it, I want to say it's been probably three months or more. Yeah. Well, it's, it's probably been three months since we started buying equipment. Yes. But we've. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit last year. Kind of got the the wheels moving a little bit. Yeah. Um. So yeah, appreciate you tuning in. This is the Locked In Podcast, uh, the number one combat sports podcast you've never heard of uh, (laughs) till now. Um, My name is Atwood. I'm here with a good friend of mine, um, my jujitsu coach, owner of this beautiful facility that we are broadcasting in. This is the Next Element Academy here in Myrtle Beach. the person sitting to my left here, uh, pro fighter. He's the expert. Former pro fighter. Former, or, yep, sorry. Former, former pro fighter. Um, 28 total MMA fights, welterweight, middleweight, and lightweight. Crazy. We'll talk about that yeah. here in a little bit. I've uh, been practicing jiu-jitsu for 18 or so years now. Um, yeah. How long have you been a black belt? I've been a black belt since 2014, so going on nine years now. Nine yeah. years as a black belt. Um, got your black belt under... Former UFC fighter Kurt Pellegrino uh, in New Jersey, right? Yep, right in. Uh, he's in Wall, New Jersey now, but he was in Belmar at the time. Well, shout out to Kurt. Hope we hope to get yeah, him on, on the podcast. Yeah. He's um, also got a podcast out. It's called Fighting for Laughs. Fighting for Laughs. Fighting for Laughs. That's dope. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Well, maybe maybe we can make a trade off. Yeah, you know, we can get him on ours and we can go on his. Yeah. Um, also, veteran served in the United States Air Force for uh, twelve years. Did. Is it four total tours, three in Iraq, one in Afghanistan? Yeah, three in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. One of the ones in Iraq was kind of like a um, a forward deployment, so I got forward deployed for somewhere else. And mm. so, yeah, I was actually in, in Afghanistan and then got forward deployed to Iraq. So Right on. From there, so, yeah, I did three tours in Iraq, one in Afghanistan, been to Honduras, did a three Honduras. months in Honduras. Like out was, in the jungle, huh? And that was awesome, but... Yeah, we'll hopefully we'll we'll talk about that one day. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to get yeah. into some of those stories. Um, and now, as I mentioned before, kind of maybe living the dream a little bit, right? You have your own Man, academy. It's, it's so crazy to to think about like just how things have changed. And you know, when I was uh, in the military and I was fighting professionally, like it was I didn't know, you know, uh, <laughs> that I was ever going to have a have an academy. I talked about having a gym, right? right? And so you hear the the term gym and you hear the term academy and they're just, um, they're two different things in, in my opinion. And so like I wanted to, uh, a gym is more a fighting gym. You know, it's more for like you come and you train and you work out and then you leave. Right. An academy to me and the reason I use the, the word academy is because um, it's a place of learning. It's like a higher development. It's a place where you go to, to learn higher knowledge right. and get better um, with yourself, you know. Um, and so when people go to college, it's usually called an academy as well. So I just wanted, um, you know, to, for people to, to, to understand the difference between the two, and a lot of times they don't, but I never – thought in a million years that I'd have a place like this, like this, much less successful, you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, so how you've had this Academy for how long now? So it's four and a half years, I guess. So so November of 2018. So going on four and a half years now or going on five years, um, you know, but, uh, and, uh, but I mean, I've had a, I had a gym, I call it a gym because I had a gym in Sumter, South Carolina when I was active duty military, but I just used it for training partners. Right, you right. know, I'd always have to pay the rent on my, <laughs> on my own Yeah, because people would come in and they, I would be like, all right, hey, I'm going to need you to get in full mount on me and just try to beat my ass, <laughs> try to beat me up. Right. And so, you know, a lot of times those things wouldn't last, you know, and so, um, and I was deploying all the time as well. I was getting deployed, so, like, that didn't really work out. But I kind of figured out a good recipe at the beginning. Like, people don't want to be punched in the face. Right, yeah. You know? And so. Especially by, you know, other, like, people who train for, for, for sure. a living. <laughs> yeah, no, a regular Joe coming out of the street, and he see, and I'm like, yeah, man, I'm getting ready for a fight. I'm going to need you to try to beat me up, okay? And so it just didn't work out, you know. But 
the guys that, you know, that hung around and stuck with it during those time frames, you know, um, yeah, it really helped me out, you know. Yeah, I, th- I also think it was a smart move going with academy over gym or, you know, whatever else, or just MMA or, or whatever, because um, when, you, when you see academy, like, well, they can't see this on the camera, but the, the logo up here on, on the wall, uh, it says, you know, it's, it's a martial arts school. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously you do boxing here. Uh, there's Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu. We start doing wrestling too as well, right? Yeah, we have Wrestling for Kids program, for our kids program, which is just uh, awesome for these kids because, you know, in a, in a self-defense situation, you want to be on top. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you know, a lot of Jiu-Jitsu um, practice, you know, people pull guard and, you know, a lot of it's practiced on bottom um, here. We try to make sure um, we emphasize the fact that being on top is the most important part. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then jiu-jitsu is great because you get comfortable on mm-hmm. your back. Yes. You know? Yep. Um, so, you know, I mentioned earlier, uh, your former fighter of 28 fights in total. Um, I think it's important to talk about this as, as the first episode, as a, as a kind of an intro. And by the way, me, no real experience. Um, I'm just like... Definitely not as cool as this guy. Well, uh, we gotta, we gotta, we'll introduce you here. I'm gonna ask you some questions here. Oh, okay. <laughs> this should be interesting. Um, but yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, for me, being somebody that just started in, in jujitsu, I mean, I've been doing it less than a year, maybe going on like seven, eight months, something like that. Um, game changer. Like, I, in no way, shape, or form do I feel I am a hard ass or I, I can beat up everybody. Yeah, well. But I do think knowing the basics in jiu-jitsu puts you miles ahead of an average person in, uh, light in, years. in a street fight. Yeah, in a, in, yeah, and I say light years, but you get a, you're going to have, you know, your high school wrestler that's going to give the person that's just started out doing jiu-jitsu a hard time. A hard time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and sometimes, you know, people doing jiu-jitsu and they see a brand new guy coming in. They've been doing jiu-jitsu for three months, but then they get this high school wrestler that came in. Different that was story. Stud. Yeah. And he's not having you laying on your back. Mm-hmm. He's going to try to smash you to the ground. You know? Right. And one and, of the things I love the most about, about jiu-jitsu as well is, um, and when I first say this, people might, their mind might start wandering in the wrong direction, but it's... It's uh, there's often I will leave here demoralized, but yeah. it's yeah. it's the most humbling experience. Um, and and you know I don't know if I would have it really any other way because I don't want to leave here feeling like you're the man uh, exactly, and that your training partners aren't helping you. Like, because that's another thing is like if you are a white belt, which you are, mm-hmm. and you're smashing blue belts and yeah. other white belts and you're like I wish well i i mean well uh i guess i'm just getting i'm the man right you know? like i guess i'm the man but then you go to another school and it might be a little bit different yep. so it is good to have that humbling experience you know uh of of of, of getting smashed every now and again you know but it's good to do the smashing too obviously yeah. because that keeps us in the sport and it right. keeps it, it makes it fun right you know and, and i mean i imagine like say say you're you are really good at jujitsu um and you are the best in the room nine times out of ten there's got to come a certain point i wouldn't know anything about this but there has to be a certain <laughs> point where it's like not only does it take the fun of it kind of take the fun out of it but I don't want to leave somewhere every day feeling like I'm the best right. because then there's no room in my mind to get better, yep. you know? A hundred percent. And, you know, I could go on and on about, about the academy, but on top of me just starting um, and, and feeling like if I needed to handle myself against, you know, hopefully they're not a high school wrestler uh, in the street that I could do that. Um, but also it's a lot of people get intimidated when you talk about, just MMA gyms or martial arts gyms in general. They're scared. Like you were saying, you're the new fresh guy and they're somebody just going to want to whoop you, um, yeah. whether it's to make themselves feel better or to prove a point, whatever the case. Um, but you don't really get that here. I mean, most of the guys that are here, uh, I mean, you do have pro fighters, you have amateur fighters. Um, there's a, there's a lot of older guys too. Uh, a lot of young people, but a lot of older guys too. And, and they're and they just coming here too. just to get better. They're just to get better, get in shape. Right. Um, 
but then they're like, well, maybe I want to compete now too. See, you that's know? I'm and, starting to feel that same way too. Yeah. Um, and but but the cool thing about them is like just it's just a maturity level. Uh, you you don't deal with the the even the young guys. You don't deal with the young guys who feel like they always have something to prove or. Um, and if there is a chip on their shoulder, like I feel like everybody here kind of well, uh, there's, there's channels levels. that positively. Yeah, there's levels. If you get yeah. the guy that has the chip on the shoulder and they're going hard, well, somebody on the mat is going to notice. See that. Yeah, yeah. And then they're going to be like, okay, I need to knock them down a little yeah, bit yeah. and just humble them a little bit. Yeah. So it's really cool how it just takes care of itself in right, that right. aspect of things. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, and I, I like to think of it as a tribe. Right on. Right? So if you think of a tribe in uh, in Africa or you know South America or something like that, right? Norm within that tribe, somebody's is if somebody starts to act out of line in that within that tribe, people within the tribe handle that person that's mm. within that tribe. Yeah, you know, and I think here martial arts is the same way. You kind know, of police and themselves. School, they police themselves. You're exactly right. Assholes don't last in the sport. <laughs> yeah. They really don't. Like, yeah. You have to be a cool dude in, if you're an asshole. Right. Jeez. Which I don't think that's a, even a thing, being a cool dude and an asshole. You know? so no, I don't think. It's, yeah. uh, it, just, it definitely doesn't. Um, they don't last, man, right. at all. So I've just seen it over the years, you know. And I tell new, new students whenever they're coming in to, to sign up, I'm like, I'm like yeah, like. Assholes don't last here. Everybody here is pretty cool, mm -hmm. you know. So, and when we first opened, I always said, "Hey, we have open mats on Fridays. Everybody is welcome, as long as you're not an asshole." <laughs> right on. If you're an asshole, don't come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I mean, uh, DK will he'll, he'll certainly deal with it. I, I'll deal with it, man. I will. And you know, it's not like I'm going to beat anybody up. No. But, but, I mean, I will, there's ways of handling it, you know. Yes, there is way. You know, I will roll with you, and I will make it the most miserable five minutes or yeah. six minutes of your life. You know, and then afterwards, I'm going to shake your hand. I'm going to be like, good job, man. Yeah, yeah. Until next time, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, let's let's touch real quick on uh, life as a fighter. Yeah. Because, um, you know, with 28 fights, how long did you, did you fight? Man, so I fought professionally for 11 years, man. And um, What about, so, like, am Amy's combined? So amateur, I only have four amateur fights. Okay. Uh, I was starting in Alaska at the time, and, you know, we weren't even allowed to fight uh, on the base, being in the military. Oh, yeah. So I had to do all this research and all this stuff, man, to, to in order to be able to fight. Mm -hmm. Be an Air Force. I was in the Air Force. Um, a lot of people call it Chair Force and all this other stuff. But it was, it was fun being an Air Force guy. We had an army base down the road, and you know the Air Force guys would go and win, mm -hmm. you know, and then being deployed and all these and to a Marine base and Marines walking in. I'm sure, yeah, because that's not like a very good relationship, is it? It it is, but it isn't. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I earned respect because I could back up my stuff, right? Yeah, like yeah. if when I would get deployed somewhere in Iraq or Afghanistan or something like that, I wouldn't end up teaching jiu-jitsu on the base. Oh, right on. But anyway, starting off at the beginning, it was so hard, you know. So I had four amateur fights. Uh, I did four amateur fights in six months. I, no, I had. Did you do them all within six. a year? I did six fights in eight months. Oh, wow. And then four of those were Emmys. And four of those were Emmys and two of them You didn't waste any broke. time. Dude. So it was like. I turn. I fought in June or July as an amateur, and I actually lost, man. I my last fight, I was like just going out there. I was like, man, I had trained with the guy before, mm -hmm. and I used to smoke him in training, mm. and he was from another team. And so we, when you go, used to go way in in Alaska. It was the wild, wild west, man. I mean, it was like it was no holds barred, pretty much. I mean, no medical or anything, no blood work. Uh, no physical, nothing. Wow. You show up, you weigh in. It How many of those days were juicing? I don't know, man, because, like, it wasn't – people were just – it was a lot of just people that wanted to fight, right? Okay, like, all right. So you got a lot of natives because we were in Alaska, so we call them natives, so Native Americans pretty right. much, but or Eskimos. If um, But they would um, 
show up just to fight, man. And man. so my first fight was against a native, and he wouldn't go down. How did that? How did that end up playing? I out? ended up it ended up going to the third round, and he ended up um, like bowing out, like he couldn't go any further. Oh, really? Um, me and him both were exhausted. We yeah. got we both got fight of the night, and right this on. was my first fight, and we got fight of the night. I got fighter of the night, and you know it was just. I was black and blue, man. Both my eyes were black the next day. And what, what like, weight was that? 85. Yeah, 85. so my first. That's had your first, first Emmy fight. fight at 85. 85, yeah. So I didn't know anything about cutting weight or anything, man. So I just right. show up, <clears throat> you know, and I weigh in. And the guy was within a, you know, I had a match, you know, and we weighed in and stuff like that. But after that, it was like I would show up to weigh-ins and my opponent wouldn't be there. And so he'd be like, "Oh, we got so and so. He he waiting in pretty close to you. So we're gonna we're gonna put you guys together." I'm uh, like, so that's how I end up having fighting that guy that wow. I knew on my last fight. It's crazy how far the the sport has come. We just you know pay attention to like minor details, just little bitty things, man. We were within ten pounds of each other, right? right? Like I was trying to fight at one seventy. I think I weighed in at like one sixty eight or something like that. I didn't know how to cut weight. Mm -hmm. And then this guy weighed in at like one sixty three. He was like, I got this guy, you know, and then I was like, Yeah, I'll fight him, you know, thinking he wouldn't, wouldn't right. accept it. <laughs> <laughs> he accepted it, you know, and the next night I fought the dude, literally just found out who I was fighting at, at weigh in. Uh -huh. And so the next day we go and we fight <clears throat> and I'm just I throw a, a kick, a right kick, and to his leg, and my hands were down. And he just boom, he just hit me down, man, knocked me, knocked me right out. And man. so, like two months after that, I had a, a, my first pro fight, which was an accident. I didn't mean to go pro. <laughs> it was like this stuff. In, it was Alaska, man. So it was it was unsanctioned. Same kind of situation. Same like situation. He's here. So I'm like, well. The promotion was in Anchorage, Alaska. Okay. And so it was called Alaska Fighting Championship. So it was a okay. bigger promotion. And I was in, I was from, I was living in Fairbanks at the time. And I was like, man, I want to go down there and fight. It's bigger, you know, it's a bigger promotion and everything. So I go down there, end up beating this guy. He was three and three. And then afterwards, at, during the time, the, when you go to look at your records and everything like that, it was on a, 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 a website called oh man um full contact fighter dot com okay full contact fighter dot com that's where they had you know, that's the where they had you could find your records and stuff right. like that as an amateur and pro I go I type my name in a couple weeks later boom my name pro want to know I'm like yeah blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I was also I'm like oh crap you know and like out of that after that fight, I'm literally walking out of the cage. I'd won by TKO in the third round. I was so pumped. The promoter's like, oh, we want to do, you want to, you want a uh, number one contender for a title shot? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> I'm like, I want to know, bro. Like, yeah. give me that title shot already. <laughs> you, you thought it was like an so, Andy title? I didn't know, man. You know, right. like, I, I hadn't been, I hadn't been. I think I had been training about a year and a half at the time. Mm. You know, brand new blue belt. Right. The guy they wanted me to fight was a brown belt in jiu-jitsu from Washington State. Nine and two as a pro. And I go and fight this guy. <clears throat> and uh, I come back the, the next month. So I had four weeks to prepare. Mm -hmm. And so I come back and he ended up tapping me out. Um he was just light years ahead of me in the jiu-jitsu game. And then after that, I moved to South Carolina. South Carolina was uh, – MMA was illegal in South right. Carolina. Yeah, until like what, like 2009 or yeah, two, or nine, some, somewhere, somewhere around, around there. in there. Yeah, so when I got here, I was like – you know, they were like, oh, well, you're a pro, so you got to go fight somewhere sanctioned now. So yeah. I'm like, oh. Is that like Florida or like Tennessee? So I drove to Louisiana. My oh, very wow. my my first fight, yeah, and the way I found the fights and got connected with people because I moved to Sumter and there was no MMA around, bro. There was nothing like Sumter, South Carolina. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot out there at all. Nothing like now there is, right? Yeah, but this was 2007, right? There wasn't 
anything there. So I opened up a little little space, and I would travel to Columbia and train jiu-jitsu, and then I would travel to Charlotte, train jiu-jitsu. I would travel to Elgin, South Carolina, train Muay Thai, and I would just bounce around and travel so much, man. And then, you know, my first fight in the States, I was one and one as a pro. I drive out to Alexandria, Virginia. I mean, uh, Louisiana. Okay. So that was like a 13-hour yeah. drive. Let's get a little hike. Yeah. Just and, Louisiana in general. And uh, with like five other dudes from South Carolina, four or five other dudes, I get there. I'm supposed to fight this guy. as one to know as a pro. I get there. I'm fighting a guy that's four and four as a pro. So eight pro fights, yeah, Experience. Bro. Experience. And I, I'm like, okay. I'm nervous. You yeah, know, the guy's right. talking about how much weight he's cut. Cut 25 pounds. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, this is going to be huge. Yeah, when get to the yeah he's going to be so massive. And I'm just like, and my friends that were there, they were like, dude, he's got eight pro fights to your only <laughs> Just two. not helping at like, all. Not helping at all. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like. And this is what a lot of MMA <coughs> fighters, like, now don't talk about is I was scared, dude. Like That's I something scared, I wanted to man. ask you about as well. Like, um, I'm, I'm sure you can remember, like, the feeling of whether it's your first pro fight or I guess the first fight you didn't know was a pro fight. But your first fight in general, like, what are some of the things that go through um, a fighter's head? Like, because I imagine that's got to be a huge battle in itself before man. – the actual fight. It's it's uh it's hard to explain, man, because you spend so long and you train and you fight and you you try to pump yourself up, right, to get ready. How to, how does DK pump himself up? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like watching um, I like watching highlights, but like listening to music, um, different things like that. I. I used to pump myself up too early before fights, you know, Ooh, sometimes. Yeah. Like, you put headphones on, and I'm headed to the arena where I'm listening to music, and then my adrenaline's going through the roof. Dumps. And I'm like, and I'm like, crap, I got to chill this out. I got to yeah. relax. You know, I got, I'm not fighting for another five or six hours, you yeah. know? Because you got to get to the venues, like, early. I mean, you got to do the fire meetings and, and all that stuff, physicals. Physicals. Yeah. All these different things, man. So mm. it's like we have to be – uh like, it's just wild, So right. the stuff that, that goes on um, during that time. But anyways, man, so, um, yeah, just getting prepared for the fight uh, alone and getting pumped up for it is, you know, you have to be careful with that because you can just get too pumped up all, yeah. you know, too so fast. Ever, like, get sick before a fight? So, one of the biggest fights I've ever had in my entire life um, you know, I was getting ready to fight a Bellator veteran. And so it was like, I was, I was scared. I'm backstage. And so back, I used to take creatine and all this stuff before mm. fights. Well, I, for some reason, this, it was like a newer creatine and I took it. And then I'm like getting ready to go out, walk, make my walk out and everything. And next thing you know, I'm like puking in, in the garbage can. Oh, no. And I'm just, like, nervous. It makes me even more nervous. I'm like, oh, crap. But fortunately, I ended up going out and finishing the, that guy in the first right round. On. But that's where this is. This yeah, the scar on the nose. That's one thing I wanted to mention, too. Uh, two fights in Bellator, right? Yep. So um, what weight was that at? So I had a fight at 155, or two fights at 155 in Bellator. So, and right those were, that was also my first time ever fighting at 55. Was my yeah. first fight in Bellator. Was Bellator. my first time cutting. In, I know, 55. You know the camera's not doing doing us justice. I mean, we're literally sitting on like little Mr. Joe chairs. <laughs> yeah. On the we're on the mats, yeah. but um, you are a big 155er. I try <laughs> a little bit. Uh, we're getting mooned, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, just a little mooned <laughs> in the background. But uh, what are you, 6'1"? Six, six, I'm 5'11", actually. You're 5'11"? Five 5'11". Eleven? Five eleven, Dude, yeah. I thought I was 5'10". There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm 5'11". Now you Maybe see I'm why I wear foot. Air Force Ones. It gives me like an extra <laughs> half inch. Yeah, so, oh. um, but, man, it was, um, I tried out for Ultimate Fighter. At 155. Let's season, talk about that. Season 15. So it was the first one that 
that was live. Okay. It was going to be filmed live. I was active duty, and, you know, I was doing some test cuts during, you know, before I ever made 155 or before I ever, like, tried it, I was like, I'm going to do a diet for a week, see what I get down to, mm-hmm. and then, or not a, just not just a week, but I would. Right. I, did, I would, when I was fighting, I was dieting pretty much all the time for 11 years. Which has got to suck. You know, which sucked. You yeah. know, like, I would have times and breaks where I would blow up and get huge and everything like right. that. But for the most part, I was on a diet for 11 years. And because I'm, like, always on the scale. Yeah. Always on the scale. Anyway, plus, I mean, you never know when you're going to get approached. Never. You know, with a fight. Never know, bro. So and you, I'll tell, you I have ready. to tell a story about <laughs> one of the times I got approached with a fight. Anyways, um, so I'm do my test cuts. And so um, at the time, man, people were cutting weight with Epsom salt and oh, really? and alcohol in their in their bathtub, what? in their hot bathtub. Yeah, it was a thing, man. It was you Epsom, Epsom salt. salt and what is so? What is the alcohol. purpose of the Epsom salt? I guess salt dries you out, like. But you're in the bath. Though. I know, but the hot water. I so, oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. hot water and Making then the alcohol sweat. maybe drawing it out. I don't oh. know where it came from, huh. man. But like that was that was a thing, right? And so I would cut weight like that in the bathtub, and then get out, and you would be like dizzy, bro. Like I wow. mean, you're just sitting in. Because you'd pour, like, two of the big things of, like, 90% alcohol in the water with you. And then a big thing smell? of Epsom salt. It was rough, man. Yeah. It was Better rough. Better the sinuses. My second fight in Bellator, I fought Felipe Nova, who was on the Ultimate Fighter as well. And I think I, for somehow, I think I was hung over from the fact that my body, I put so much alcohol in the water because I... Mm. At about twenty minutes before my, before we weigh in, mm-hmm. and I ended up, um, you know, cutting. Uh, I had twenty minutes. I needed to cut two more pounds. I was over two pounds. Dang! And I remember putting that hot water, putting the bathtub hot as it would go, dumped some more alcohol, more Epsom wow. salt in the bath, got in there, boom, two and a half pounds gone. Twenty minutes. Have you ever done any, like, crazy extreme stuff just to cut weight? Like, I've heard people talk about... uh, Enemas. uh, I've seen people do enemas. I've never did that, but, like, I've seen people do enemas. But not only that, just, like, drinking laxative. So, (laughs) when I first started, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, right? So, it's like, you know, first amateur fight. I have... I did drink laxative one or two times, but I... After doing research, that makes you dehydrated even more. Ooh, yeah, good point. You know, um, point. it's taking out all your bodily inside of your body fluids, yeah. which sitting in a tub of alcohol is not doing anything. Right. Better, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, fighting Felipe Nova, man, I would, I remember standing in the cage next to him, and I'm like, loopy headed. It felt like I don't know if you've ever been, you've been hung over before. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm no angel. Yeah. <laughs> so. The next day afterwards, you feel like you're kind of floating. Your head's like, right. Ugh, like, that's what I felt like uh-huh. in the fight. So it was. Wow. Like, that's got to be scary. It was scary, man. I felt Especially like that all day, all day long. So it was right. like, I'm thinking about this, thinking about this. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't, I don't, I don't feel good. Yeah. I don't feel right. I don't feel good. I feel hung over is the way I thought it. And, you know, I, obviously after fight, I'm like thinking back. I'm like, had to be. Alcohol in the water. And now, right. with research and people doing, I just, if I want to cut weight, man, I just do it in a jacuzzi mm. or a hot bathtub numerous times. Right. I don't put anything in it. And I just kind of relax. I listen to reggae music and just chill. Picture myself on a on a Caribbean island. Well, obviously, you know, the MMA day is done. But you still do compete in Jiu-jitsu. So doing Pan Am's end of March, so second largest, so should yeah, be big, around big deal. big deal. Second largest tournament usually, um, so it goes you know you usually Europeans, Pan Am's, Worlds. Um, All right. So I haven't competed in over a year and a half. Okay. Um, what weight are you competing at? So with the gi on, it's 181 with the gi on. So okay. it's. It's a whole lot different, man. Like now, I'm having to like cut weight to, and I have to take 
into account four pounds, four to five pounds for an actual uniform. You know, mm, so I have yeah. to work So those are you competing in. just in the gi or no gi? Just gi-tru? in the gi. So just only, what would you say the weight was for gi? 181. So is it only 181 because that's the gi weight? No, so or? it's um, so 181 and a half mm-hmm. with your gi on right. is what you have to weigh in right. at. Um, and then you have, you know, uh, middle heavy, which is like, I think 194 and, or something like that. And then you have heavyweight and then below that you have lightweight, which is like 168, I think right. with the gi on. So 168 to 181, I, there's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you wanted to make 168 with the gi on, I'd have to be four pounds lighter than that right. 68. So 64. So it's like, and with IBJJF, you have to weigh in literally almost like right before you get on to the mat, mm. you know? So it's uh, oh wow! Difficult. So you, there's really no rehydration period at all. No, no. Wow. Which is, I like that. Really, you know, I like that fact. You know, people still cut weight. They, you know, people are gonna always cut yeah. weight because like you have a I mean, one eighty weight class, right? And then you have a one ninety five weight. But class. not getting to rehydrate. That's gotta play in a lot of people's minds. Like you know, normally I'd cut. You know, say it's like for an MMA fight. I think. An average is at least like fifteen pounds that people will cut for mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Because normally you'll cut that much, but you also get, in most cases, a day to rehydrate. Mm-hmm. So, but in this twenty-four hours, but it's like right, right. It, right, it probably makes it. people question, like, do I really want to go down yeah. that low? Yeah. Because I mean, I imagine people will cut a lot of weight, um, for, well, especially when you have time to rehydrate for the pure advantage of, of yeah, size. Yeah, absolutely. I used to do um, IBJJF. I think my first IBJJF was at middle heavy, which is one ninety four. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and Dang. I was fighting it lightweight then. Yeah. I was fighting it lightweight then. That's crazy. Because I, I would, after a fight, man, I, I'm telling you, I would blow up to 185. I think 188 before my Felipe Nova fight was the biggest I ever got. Mm-hmm. And cutting all the way down man. to 55. But you get eight weeks to diet. Right. But like you said, it's usually, man, when I was fighting at 55, it was the last 24 hours was the hardest right, you know i was right. cutting 14 to 15 pounds the last 24 hours mm-hmm. so some people do more than that have i've done well, 20 in 24 i've mentioned hours. that to um so one of the dudes that i work with in radio uh we were talking about it not too long ago um about weight cutting and he'd be like man uh because because i i mentioned to you i'm i'm considering competing and um from whatever i was looking at online for like new breed or whatever uh, it was like 158 is their lightweight. And mm-hmm. I weigh probably like 167, 168 now. And I had made the uh, the comment to him, like, dude, if I really wanted to, it wouldn't be healthy. But if I really wanted to, I could I could cut that overnight. For sure, for and he's sure. like, no, no. And I was like, you don't understand how many how many pounds fighters cut overnight. I mean, yeah. it's I would imagine it's water weight at that point. Yeah, it, it's mostly – it's all water weight, you know. and But you have to also watch – the food intake too, because you have to eat, right? right like you right. have to eat. Otherwise you're going to be like a zombie. Right. So you do this little thing called grazing, you know, just like, like on like kale. <laughs> well, it could be spinach. It could be blueberries. It could be, mm. you know, um, almond butter. It could be boiled chicken. You've told me that story. Yeah, I mean, that's not, disgusting. Not yeah. It could be, um, you know, just anything simple, you know, as far as like throughout the throughout the week goes. Now, obviously, I'm not going to graze the whole week. It's usually the last little, right. the last day, last 24 hours, I'm going to graze probably and just barely sip water yeah. or something like that. So it will last me until the time I have to to uh, to, to weigh in. You right. know? And then after the weigh in, it's you don't want to just gorge yourself with right. all this fluid. Got to rehydrate in, in a strategic yeah. manner. So many people just take a Pedialyte, mm. and I've seen this so many oh, times. Oh, you see that a lot in the UFC, fights. too, as soon as they get off the scale. Boom, and they turn this Pedialyte up. It's made for babies. You're right. It's made for babies, dude. Yeah, to dilute it, maybe. Well, it's made for babies. You got this big, giant thing made for babies, and you're drinking one of them. Right. right. Yeah, you do. You definitely need to dilute it, but there's been studies out there that just rehydrating with water, um, some salt in it, some mm. good sea salt inside your water, and then a, some lemon as well inside your water 
helps you absorb the water and get your 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 body back you know together a little bit right you know so and you you want to drink it ice cold because you can't can't yeah. Go, 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 yeah. guzzle it so i you know you can sip it ice cold and stuff like mm. that so it helps it go down and absorb a little bit easier and you want your first gallon done before you go to bed you want a gallon of water after you after you've cut I mean, you've just cut pounds. Dude, it's so hard to, to drink a gallon of water in a day for yeah. me. So, but if you weigh in at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, man, you better drink that water all night long, even, like, till midnight. And, mm-hmm. like, anytime you wake up, boom, boom, you're guzzling water. So that way you're peeing clear. I want right. I want my fighters to pee, pee clear before they even – Yeah. Before they go to bed. Mm-hmm. So. That, that reminds me as well um, – so my girl gave me some some. Her dad's a chiropractor, and uh, and I was telling you this the other day. But he has a bunch of stuff that he sells. Um, like she gave me like some liquid zinc that I can pure zinc that I can just put seven drops in any Pretty drink man. every day. Yeah. Uh, she also gave me. I haven't used it yet. I haven't really felt the need to use it yet. But it's pure electrolytes, and all you do is you put a capful in a, in a drink, or you know you can just yeah drink yeah. it as like a shot, and it's supposed to be very good for you and to rehydrate you. And I have a lot of it, so. I'll give you some to take to the um, to the Pan Ams, and you can cool. kind of yeah, let me know how that goes for sure. Um, but it's something that I've that I thought of. Well, that's cool to have, but I don't know if I'll ever need it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, um, you can use it after right right after training too. It'll help true, you, true, help you out a lot. And, and when, in terms of me, like I I fluctuate weight really easily. So if I ever wanted to compete, like I said, I weigh probably like one sixty seven, one sixty eight right now. I could, I mean, that could be gone in a matter of just changing my diet yeah, and you cutting can out do, sodas. Go, I think in a new month. breeds are only like one, ten every ten pounds, like a one sixty to one seventy, somewhere around right. in there, or one seventy five, somewhere. Around. So yeah, one sixty. If you're at one sixty eight, is like easy. You know, yeah. just switching up your diet a little bit. Yep. And like, dude, like cutting drinking out, more water. Yeah, cutting out soda. If I did that a month out, then I wouldn't yes. even really have to change anything because yeah. I burned enough calories in here every day. You drink soda. Yeah. Well, no, I don't drink a whole lot. Um, what kind of soda do you drink? So I'll enjoy a nice little cherry Pepsi. A little cherry Pepsi, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. It's sometimes I'll, if I'm feeling like froggy, you know, I'll get one of them like uh, Purple Mountain Dews. <laughs> you don't drink soda, do you? I don't drink soda. You're I a sweet the, tea guy, though, aren't you? I do. I'll drink a little bit of sweet tea, but I don't go full sweet, you know? Okay. Uh, I go You drink a your coffee black? No. Um... I may I, I drink lattes, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah you got latte that latte guy. thing for Christmas, right? Yeah, yeah. Megan got me a um a latte machine. And well, it's not a latte machine. It's it's pretty man, you can make lattes all kinds of different things with right. it. But yeah, it's like you grind your got a grinder in it and everything. Yeah, so you, got so the you basically filter, work for yeah. thirty minutes to make a make a cup. Man, I got it down Do a little you? bit lower. It's you like set it up now. Uh, at night so it's like no, already. Uh, 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 no, yeah. Megan's like, she's like, you're never going to clean this thing. I'm like, I'm going to clean it all the time. She, I'm <laughs> like, hey, will you make me a, a coffee this morning? She was like, yeah, right after I clean it because <laughs> I had left it open. But, yeah, I'm, I love coffee. Um, I don't like a whole lot of sugar, I guess you can say. Mm. I drink these Kill Cliffs. Um, these are, this is like the energy drink portion of it, but um, I, who knows it. You know, there's probably going to be a class action lawsuit comes out <laughs> many year, years later, like there is, is with other is energy brand? drinks. Yeah, that, there, there's one brand that's getting it right now. I can't remember. Or maybe um, it's not energy drink. Maybe it's just like. No, a, it's Bang. It's Bang? Bang, yeah. Bang is getting. Um, bang. Because they're saying they had creatine and all that. Well, all they, that they stuff. advertise creatine on it. Yeah, and it ain't got nothing in it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's <laughs> Yeah. What about so so Richard? You guys can't see him. He's behind the cameras right now. He's kind of like doing the producing. You drink bags all the time, right? You love them. Can you feel the creatine? <laughs> he doesn't know if he can feel the creatine or not. Man, I'll, I'll walk over and uh, he'll just have a bang drinking it, and then you see another bang on the table. Wow. <laughs> dude, bang this, bang. This man dude, drinks bang bang a ton real quick. Of bangs, dude. Man, my buddy. Um. Uh, and we'll, maybe we'll have him on the show if he's in, in uh, Rayhan. He's a doctor, and uh, he he's a highly 
competitive jiu-jitsu athlete as well. Oh, that'd be sick. A yeah. doctor in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's a, he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He came, he trained here for a couple of years while he was doing his residency. Anyways, we travel around when to tournaments and different things like that. And he's a big foodie as we were talking about earlier. Right. Right. Uh, I'm a foodie as well. And so he does these things he calls bang bangs. Okay. And what he does is he goes to these restaurants. He'll go to a restaurant and he orders like, random shit off the menu just random stuff eats that going right to another restaurant ordering wow. random stuff all that dude can eat man <laughs> dude can eat he competes at the same weight class as me right but he used to be over 200 and something pounds back in the day he played football at dartmouth okay and he was massive dude rayhan can eat man like he loves sushi he loves korean food um yeah, we need to try he's, to get him he, on. Yeah, That'd he's def, an he's an interesting dude. Um, so he lives out in California now, uh, L.A., and um, he's from that's where he's from. He trained with uh, Cobrinha, he's black belt under Cobrinha. Right on. Um, and uh, but great guy, man. Won Pan Ams at Purple Belt and won Europeans at Purple Belt as well. Um, beat he had sixty four people in his division. Wow, for Europeans. How many? Sixty. How many man. matches? I, I don't mean, even I, know. I man. guess you divide it by two. I want to say it's like he had over ten matches. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's crazy. Um, so one thing I want to touch on quickly. I think we can do like a whole episode on this in itself. But since we've already talked a little bit about your career, um, I mean, there always comes a, you know, a time in every any kind of career you have where it's like. You start questioning whether it's something you want to continue to do, whether it's something you can yeah. continue to do. So let's uh, – before we jump, you know, into that, and like I said, we'll just touch on it briefly because that could be a podcast in itself. During your years um, of competing professionally, I know there's got to be some moments that, that kind of always stuck out to you, like whether – doesn't have to be a favorite moment it could be your worst moment but there's definitely some moments that stick out and there's got to be one that's like at the top of that totem pole um in terms of just like a just a moment that you'll always that you'll never forget right good yeah. or bad i don't care yeah um so i got some good ones and i got some bad ones but probably the best moment at, you know as far as like winning uh, a fight is the fight that i was talking about when i you know went up to indiana fight this dude that was you know one of my biggest you know wins ever and uh took the fight on on four weeks notice guys just coming off of two bellator losses one to roger huerta no roger and the other one to not uh, personally but daniel <laughs> the other one to daniel strauss who ended up being the you know i think uh was at you know he ended up being the champ at bellator at one point in time mm -hmm. but this was at um he was going to come up to 170, this guy that I was going to be fighting. So he came up to 170. I hadn't been to 55 yet. And so I was coming up to his hometown. On the way up there, I was with some friends of mine, and we're driving through the mountains, and my truck just starts smoking out of nowhere. And I'm just like, what is going on? I'm like, am I breaking down or what? We go to some truck stops and stuff. Nobody would help us, and nobody would so we go to this other place, and we're just hopping through town after town, like, because my truck's smoking. We don't know what's going on. Go to this one place, and he's like, hey, man, and he pulls it up on a lift. He's like, yeah, your transmission's overflowing. It's heat over, it's heating up because you're pressing the gas, going up the yeah. hill, and then letting it off. And so it, right. like, your transmission is boiling over. He fixed it, charged me 20 bucks, got back on the road. I get there. I forgot my scale, so I was weighing in. I was putting quarters in at truck stops to check my weight on those little rinky-dink scales that they have. Anyways, get there, and uh, I was a pound over. Had to cut weight some more. Yeah. Biggest fight I've ever had, you know, in this guy's hometown. And come out, um, we had a really good fight, man. And, you know, end of the first round, um, he takes me down. He elbows me in the nose, bridge of the nose, right. with his right arm. But he had his left arm behind, behind my head, head, and I arm barred you him. into it. 
Oh, well, you arm barred. I arm barred his left arm. Yeah. Oh, so he's sick. like, yeah, he pulled me into the arm bar, and right after that, I just swung for the arm bar. Right on. And about broke his arm, and then um, yeah, man, that was that was such a big, just such a really good like feeling for me, you know. So yeah, that right was probably the biggest one. Well, um, so we'll save the rest of your career for for the next pod because I feel like that's yeah, uh, yeah, something huh. good that we can talk about. Um, in the future podcast, though, definitely want to try to get some of your your friends on and, and get some of my friends on um, from like the refing side of things yeah. and talk about your refing career now and yeah, yeah, the, it just started, but man, it's been interesting already. Yeah, you know, I got just some pretty up cool close stories. and personal. Yeah. watching people get yeah, yeah, flatlined in the cage. Yeah, yeah, yep. and then coaches pissed. We'll yep. talk about that. That's <laughs> that's interesting stuff, but um. So, yeah, we'll try to pump one of these out a week uh, and, and see where it goes, man. I, th- I think this is going to be a journey that we both enjoy, and yeah. um, I'm stoked for it. Yeah, I am too, man. It's good to kind of reminisce back on a couple of little right. things and, and talk about combat sports in a in a nice little sitting area to where we can talk about, like, memories and how things have grown over the years too. Right on, man. Well, cool. I, th- I think we'll just wrap it up here, man, and uh, do it again next week. Yeah, buddy. Appreciate you guys for watching. Um, yeah. I'm not going to hit y'all with the like, comment, subscribe yet. <laughs> Go ahead and hit that like, comment, and subscribe. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, more content coming. Hopefully, we'll have some. We'll have some former UFC fighters, maybe even a former UFC champion on. I yeah. uh, have some guys that have refed all over the world in the UFC, Bellator, all the big organizations. Um, have local fighters here, um, yeah. local jujitsu competitors here, and uh, just talk about really anything combat sports. So um, yeah, it'll be nice. To get some other people in here and we'll yeah be able to smash it up. Right on, right on. All right, well we'll call it till next time. <laughs>